Hello, this is Ms. Hobbs with Washington High School in the Physics Unit, and we are going to be covering electricity and electric circuits. What we're going to do is take a quick notes over a video that's going to last about five to seven minutes, and Ms. Hobbs in the real life classroom will be modeling what notes you should be taking on the whiteboard. So you don't need to write everything down on the PowerPoint, it's just a visual, but you do need to start thinking critically about what's important, what should I write down, and what should I not write down. And Ms. Hobbs will model that for you inside the classroom. So today we're going to go over electric circuits and electricity and talk about the lab that we did yesterday. And this unit's going to cover electric circuits, current and voltage, and then also resistance and Ohm's law. Although we'll do current and voltage and resistance and Ohm's law on a separate PowerPoint. Uh, the investigation that you guys did yesterday was basically creating a circuit board with a battery, bulb, and switch and making that work. And we're going to kind of discuss how that actually does work in the current system. So the best analogy we can do for people who are not electricians is that electric current is like water or water wheel. And water can carry energy and actually do work. That's how we get power. That's how we get electricity is the electric current doing work on filaments, electric current doing work on computers, etc. Circuit is a complete loop on the water system. Um, in order for electricity to work, that loop has to be completed. If that loop is shorted out, it is what is called an open circuit. So you got the pipe analogy of how it has to be a closed system. And then you also have the idea of it an outlet where there's an in port and an out port. And even if you are don't have the outlet on, you're still drawing a little bit of electricity from that in port just to make sure that the appliance isn't on. It's called vampire electricity and it's actually responsible for about 20% of your electric bills. Oh, you also have natural circuits. Uh, your body, your nervous system actually has nerves that carry electrical currents to different parts of your body. And other natural circuits are, an example would be an electric eel, makes a circuit when it sends its prey with a jolt of electricity. And lightning also creates a current for a short amount of time. Uh, lightning is more of an example of static electricity where the current isn't stable. If we could harness lightning, we'd have a lot of power, but we'll get to that later. So here's the basic idea of a circuit, and you can see the circuit diagram. This is a much better symbol of a bulb than what I drew yesterday but you'll see the symbol of a battery, an open switch, and then the wires connecting it. And then these are the electric symbols. You'll notice the resistor. You can't see the squiggly lines in it, but a resistor basically resists the current. That's where work is being done. So any major appliance would be considered, any type of thing that draws current would be considered a resistor. You move the charge. We've talked about the charge differential between the layers of metal and a battery. And it once balanced, you just can't continue to lose electrons. So the electrons are almost forced back to the other side. And a rechargeable battery increases this difference once you plug it in. It really redraws the current lines. So we're talking about resistors here. And we've got another schematic of the uh, circuit diagram. We've got closed circuit. An open circuit, you guys made those. No current flows in an open circuit. So it's kind of counterintuitive with our language. We think open as in ready for business, but really an open circuit is when there is no power. And that's it. And we'll be going to explain Ohm's law and the ideas of how voltage, current, and resistance interrelate to each other in the next slide. Thanks. 